two videos in a row. It never happens, but I'm bored. So today I'll be putting in this uh, tie rod in. Been sitting on this for a long time, so I got nothing else to do, so I might as well do it. All right, now that I got the wheel off, I'm gonna take the caliber and the rotor off just to give me a little bit extra room uh, to install or remove the tie rod. One thing I tried to do before I started was to get the steering wheel as straight as I could. That way when I'm putting everything back on, my steering wheel's not extremely crooked to one side or the other. I'm sure I'll have to adjust it a little bit, but just kind of. All right, so now that I got the wheel, the rotor, the caliper off, I thought I had a 21 millimeter, 21 or 22 millimeter wrench to fit on this nut for the tie rod, but apparently I don't. So I'm using my adjustable wrench. So I got that on there and my little massage tool to kind of smack it loose and hopefully this thing plays nicely otherwise it's gonna be a long day and there we go just like that after a few love taps i'm able to adjust this locking jam nut whatever you want to call it but before i do that i'm going to tighten up this hand tight and i'm going to count the threads that way when i put it back on i know roughly about where I should be at as far as the length on the inner tie. Alright, so I counted about 12 threads from the beginning of the inner tie ride where the threads are to where the jam nut is. So that'll keep me the steering fairly straight until I can get it aligned and they can get it perfect. Alright, so here I have my side cutters to take off this cutter pin. I usually never have good luck with these. They usually end up breaking, but I guess today is my lucky day because I was able to get this out in one piece. Alright, so now that I got the uh, cotter pin out, I have my 19mm socket that I'm going to use to break loose it. It should have been a castle nut, but it's not. But to break loose this nut, and after that, I should be able to smack this bad boy out and reverse install in reverse order. Alright, so I was able to break this nut off pretty easily. I have had to fight them where um, if your ball joint is really bad, sometimes it'll just spin this whole assembly. So I was able to get the nut off fairly easily. I have had to fight them before where this, the bolt just keeps spinning on the ball joint. And um, it's a bad day when that happens. But you're able to, if that does happen, you're able to grab the bottom portion uh, with maybe some uh, locking pliers to hold this stud from spinning and then you'll be able to get it out that way. But that wasn't the case for me today, so that's great. All right, so after loosening the nut on the top of the tie rod, I had to smack it out with a hammer, give it a few love taps and it came right out. I've seen people use um, like pry, bar, pry bars or pickle forks in there. Um, I did have to remove this little steering bracket spacer thing so I could get a good lick at it um, and it popped right off. But when I was removing this bracket, I found that this bolt, um, when I was removing it, was already stripped out. And that is why... So being the idiot that I am, I uh, left that bolt on there, I'm sorry, that nut on the top of the ball joint when I was smacking on it. And I wasn't thinking that once I get it smacked out of the housing in the steering knuckle, that it was going to be a pain to get back off. So I ended up having to cut it off. So don't be like me. Just take the nut off to begin with and then smack it down. But uh, I got it off, so that's all that matters. All right, so now that I get, got the ball joint out of the housing, you can see what's left of the boot, which isn't much. Um, so now I can just start to unthread this off of the back or the top of the inner tie rod, depending on how you look at it and put the new one on. So I'm gonna mark today as a success. Hopefully nothing crazy happens on the install. And we'll keep on going. All right, so the old ball joint is out. Uh, does not look to be an OEM Nissan one. Probably a Duralast replacement. Get out of here with that. Now time to install the new one in reverse order. Like I said earlier, this is a Moog. I don't know if it's much better than what just came off of it, but it at least has a little pin that I can install to grease it every once in a while. So I'm gonna get to work on that and we should be 
finishing up. Fitting. Yeah, got the little grease fitting installed. And now I'm ready to slap this bad boy back so in. Now I got the washer back on. I torqued it down to 30 foot pounds, which I believe to be correct after doing a little bit of research. And when you when you torque it on, you just want to make sure you leave enough space that you can fit that cotter hole or cotter pins through, through that hole. So I'm gonna put that on and bend those cotter pins back. And this job will have been complete. And I did torque um, that nut down there too. All right, so I got everything back together. Um, while I had the wheel off, I decided to clean it up a little bit because when I always I wash or detail whatever you want to call it. I wash my car a lot, but when I do, I can never get these barrels clean because I never take off the wheels and I don't really have the proper wheel woolly or whatever you want to call it. So w while I had the wheel off, I decided to clean up the barrel so it looks a lot better. Um, I don't know, these, these things need to be like repainted or something. But I also decided to uh, spray paint the rotors, kind of make it look a little better, kind of match the back. So I painted those black. Uh, so hopefully the car starts and the steering isn't too bad. Um, like I said, I'm going to go get it aligned here soon. But hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was somewhat entertaining. And if you made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. And if you see something that I did wrong or that needs to be corrected, uh, let me know in the comments. See ya.